Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. Thank you everyone that submitted questions on the Star Wars trailer. This is gonna be my Q&A for that, as well as my huge thank you for 500K. Seriously, I cannot thank you guys enough for how awesome you've been. You have no idea what a dream come true it is that I actually get to make YouTube videos for a living. Thank you everyone for just spending your free time talking about movie and TVs with me. It's utter and complete nonsense. I just cannot think of a better way to spend the rest of my life. So here's to the next 500K. Thank you so much to all the people who found me when I had one subscriber or the people that just found me yesterday. Now let us talk about some Star Wars. So big news, we actually got some questions answered, official questions answered since the trailers come out. Most notably, like who some of the people in the trailer were that weren't immediately recognizable, specifically the really evil sounding voice. It actually ended up being Andy Serkis, which is a bit of a surprise because the voice sounds nothing like him. I'll talk a little bit about him as we get into rumors and spoilers at the end of the video. I will just say light spoiler warning now. I will speak about a few of the rumors just as I get into a couple of the questions, but I will do like a section at the end where I'll talk about some of the bigger rumors. So I'll say spoiler warning again whenever I get to that. Here we go though. Question number one. Shinobu asks, do you think that they'll have a Jedi Council rebuilt by Luke in this timeline? Not like we saw in the prequels, but this is actually where the first big rumor comes in. There is a British actor that has Star Wars Episode 7 listed on his CV and he's written down the role of Padawan. So if there's a Padawan in the movie and it's not like a dark Padawan, like it's not a Sith situation, there has to be some sort of academy situation happening. Whether or not there's a lot of them remains to be seen. His name is Sam Carr. There are actually a number of actors that were revealed as Star Wars 7 cast members based on this CV listing. It's from this place called Spotlight UK. I don't know if there's any truth to it, but if there's a bunch of actors listing Star Wars Episode 7 on their CV, and if no one's professionally slapping them in the face for lying about Episode 7, then it means it's probably true. Question number two, Data Lore Forever asks, aren't all Stormtroopers clones? That's actually a good question. I saw a lot of confusion about this. No, not all of them are clones. So part of the reason that Rebels exists, like the Star Wars Rebels cartoon, is to set the stage for the galaxy and some of the ideas that we're going to see in the new trilogy even though the series takes place, you know, way, way in the past. If you saw that episode, there was an episode with Ezra Bridger joining the Imperial Academy. Like right around the time of Rebels, the Empire starts taking recruits again. So that by the time of the original trilogy, you know, episodes four, five, and six, most of those stormtroopers are actually regular people that they've just recruited. For the most part, I think the clones are said to have died out during the wars. I'm sure there are still some floating around. But when you see like legions of stormtroopers, most of them are recruits that are trained. Question number three, Deacon asks, it's a trap planet, you say. You think they're on Mon Calamari? That's one of the better rumors I've seen. Like they were filming on an island in a lake. So of all the places that they could possibly be visiting, like all the planets in episode seven, here are some of the places that they filmed. So the place that I was talking about, you know, it's a trap. Yes, Mon Calamari. They filmed at Ireland's Skellig Michael. That's the place that everybody thinks could be Mon Calamari, just because they filmed on this really tiny island that could have been the entrance to this undersea living area. It could also have been the place in the trailer we saw those X-Wings flying over that big lake. I've seen some rumors that one of the original cast members could be living there, but they're a little far-fetched, so I'm not going to get too deep into it. But some of the other filming locations were Tunisia and Abu Dhabi, in addition to Pinewood Studios in London, of course. Personally, really excited to see Mon Calamari, though, if that ends up being true. Question four, Wizard of Warlocks asks, the Dark Jedi looks like a female. I mean, it's really a thin looking figure. It could be a couple of characters though. We've already know that Adam Driver is going to be the villain in the movie, but he's not gonna be the only bad person. We do know there's not gonna be a giant group of Sith. So this person is probably going to be the obvious villain that we see, like the Darth Vader type character. And then Andy Serkis might be that big, big character in the shadows that won't serve us till episode eight and nine. He is the voiceover in the trailer, so I think of, you know, this character that we're seeing with the lightsaber is existing in a relationship to Andy Serkis as Darth Vader and the Emperor did in the original trilogy and the prequels. The reason that everyone thinks that it might be Brienne of Tarth, Gwendolyn Christie, I just think of her as Brienne all the time, is because of the way she's walking. Like, it's just very similar to this Game of Thrones scene. So I'll just actually play this gif while I'm talking about this. I mean, it could be Adam Driver, because he is one of the villains. It could also be Domhnall Gleeson. He's rumored to be one of the antagonists too. Not the main villain, but one of the antagonists. But I do think that it is one of the new cast members. My odds are on Gwendolyn Christie or Adam Driver though. I just really love the idea of an evil Brienne of Tarth. Question five, Jake asks, would you consider doing a video on the events of the Clone Wars cartoon, like a bonus video? I'm totally open to stuff like that. Feel free, if you have any requests about old stuff, please leave them in the comments.
the Clone Wars has like such this big history and I kind of skipped over it. Like I wasn't like a big Clone Wars fan while it was on. Like towards the end, I did kind of jump on the bandwagon. I haven't watched the Lost Missions yet, but I'm totally open to doing bonus videos for it. Most of the videos I do will focus on the movies, but I do kind of want to get into expanded canon. I've really enjoyed doing Rebels videos. It hasn't quite lived up to what I wanted it to be, but that's okay. I mean, I have really high expectations for Star Wars series. So next year, I'll start focusing on more movie and expanded canon videos. Remember though, technically the only things that are being considered as canon are like the new animated series, the new books, the new comics. There are a few aspects from Clone Wars that they're including in the canon, but you know, technically it's it's all the new stuff since Disney bought them. So I'll try to get into the new novels, but it is always fun to look back at the old stuff. Question six, MG player asks, the force moon of Endor, of course. Yeah, so that means we gonna see Ewoks again. Well, not necessarily. It is interesting to think that we could go back to Endor. I mean, we're gonna have to see like a couple of familiar places in addition to all the new planets we'll visit. I can just see like Disney's story team and J.J. Abrams getting really excited to show these familiar places that all the fans know about and twist them in really unusual ways. The idea that Endor may be going through some sort of like nuclear winter is pretty crazy. I think in that situation, all the Ewoks would be dead though. As ingenious as they are able to mount a complete offensive against the Empire in under an hour, I don't think that they would be able to survive a nuclear winter. I have seen some rumors about why this character in particular is on Endor. Think about what happened in Return of the Jedi and what might have been left there, like really notorious items that might have been left there. Supposedly he is there to find them. I think there was also a story in the Expanded Universe that dealt with that. I think it's from Kevin J. Anderson's Jedi Academy trilogy. I think that's when that story took place. It's been a long time since I read those novels. That was like the next trilogy that came after the Thrawn trilogy. I would actually say of like of all the novels that came out, like all the Expanded Universe novels, Thrawn trilogy, still in my mind the best. Then the Kevin J. Anderson Jedi Academy trilogy. That was when Luke Skywalker started to establish the Academy on Yavin. But yeah, I don't think that we're going to see Ewoks again. We'll probably get some sort of reference, some sort of visual reference to Ewoks. I cannot wait till Star Wars Celebration. I can only imagine the amount of questions that are going to be asked about the movie. So this detail, like the Ewok detail, will definitely come out before the movie. I would expect it to be on the level of Easter egg, like, you know, something buried in some of the frames somewhere. Question number seven, Christopher asks, what's up with the astromech droid's head on a soccer ball? Why? I mean, we don't know that it's an astromech droid, but it's rumored to be the droid built by Daisy Ridley, that the character we see on Tatooine. No idea what its purpose is other than being a companion or scoping out salvage sites, but this is supposed to belong to Daisy Ridley, and it does look like it's on Tatooine. It does seem like they're trying to turn it into a character on the level of R2, although I don't think that anything is ever going to be a character on the level of R2, other than 3PO, that is, or the bounty hunter droids like IG-88. I'm actually surprised that we haven't seen any of those, but I'm sure in some of the future footage that they roll out, we might see some cybernetic life, cybernetic forms of life, but you know, between droids and cyborgs. The interesting thing about that droid though, is that like its control unit seems like it's magnetically attached to the ball itself, like the soccer ball or whatever you want to call it. It is an interesting idea. I mean, it would give it, you know, much more maneuverability. Question eight, Keegan asks, could you do a video about lightsabers and the force in general, and then how it's going to be related to the movies and the characters? Yeah, I'm totally open to any ideas for other bonus videos. I mean, for specific bonus videos are probably what I'm most interested in. So yes, totally. Like I said in my breakdown, the Force, one of the most interesting things in terms of lore. Jedi lore, especially like Knights of the Old Republic, like all the comics and stuff really got deep into that. Who knows how much of that they're going to completely rewrite. Hopefully they don't completely trash it all because some of it is really, really interesting. I'm totally open to that. Whenever I do bonus videos for stuff like that though, I will specify like, this is where this information comes from. It might be thrown out. It might be completely different in the new trilogy. So even though Lucasfilm and Disney aren't really thinking about it specifically, we can still talk about it. Jedi lore was like a really important part of my enjoyment of the franchise and generally the video games as well as the comics and the books. So I mean, I'll continue to talk about it. Question number nine, Lewis asks, do you know for sure it's a dark Jedi and not a Sith? Yeah, so you're talking about that character. No, I mean, we don't know specifically if it's Sith, Dark Jedi, or one of the Inquisitors. I'm actually more inclined to think that it's one of the new Inquisitors. I mean, it's either one of the new Inquisitors, or it is like the new main character that's going to take on the Darth Vader type role, which would make it either a fallen Jedi or a Sith. They spent all this time in Star Wars Rebels setting up the idea of Inquisitors. I believe that Inquisitors are going to be very important to the new trilogy. Like, that's why they're laying all this groundwork in Rebels now. It's like a backdoor around the rule of two. So like you can have characters that wield lightsabers, 
but they don't necessarily have the level of training or the indoctrination of Sith characters. It's rumored that Gwendolyn Christie is actually going to be one of those type of characters. Like she's not going to be a Sith. She'll be part of the Empire, but she will be one of the Inquisitors. And they're the group that's kind of roaming around the galaxy chasing people down. Like they fill the vacuum left by Vader and the Emperor's death. Just in general, like in terms of Rebels, think about the big things that you see, like the way the Empire's organized, its relationship to the rest of the galaxy. Like that's what things are going to look like in the new trilogy. Question number 10, Wookbook asks, The X-Wings flying over the lake reminds me of the greatest Star Wars video game, Rogue Squadron. Yes, that was an awesome video game. Rogue Squadron took place after Episode 4. The spin-off movie, Red 5, when is that going to take place? Episode 8 or 9? Well, we don't really know when it's going to take place. It's rumored to actually be one of the earlier spin-off movies, so presumably it would take place sometime after Episode 7. Yeah, one of the things I'm really looking forward to in Episode 7 is them setting the stage for what all these spin-off movies are going to be. I think some of the spin-off movies won't occur concurrently with the new trilogy. Some of them might be prequels, but I do think this X-Wing movie will be set like during the time of the new trilogy. That is, of course, assuming that it will be an X-Wing movie. The Rogue Squadron novels were actually a big part of the expanded universe, so if fans are that interested in looking into the lives of Rebel pilots, then I think that they would totally turn that into a movie, at least in the new canon, which is why they're calling it Red 5 instead of Rogue 5. And yes, that character is Oscar Isaac, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to show up in that Red 5 movie. Question 11, Shane asks, Man, you're always talking about Legend of Korra. I'm curious, Charlie, in what order is your favorite if you had to pick between Game of Thrones, Star Wars, or Korra? If you had to drop one, what would it be? I mean, in terms of favorite, I mean, Star Wars is my original fandom. Like, when I was growing up, that was, like, the first thing I was a fan of. Right now, though, I mean, yeah, Game of Thrones does dominate a lot of my mind, but Korra is ending, so I would say most of my attention is on Korra right now, actually, because Game of Thrones hasn't gotten started yet. Like, Season 5 isn't here. The thing that's always biggest on my mind just rotates to whatever is actually happening currently. I think the only way that I would drop, like, one of those things is if I had, like, so many things to do that I wanted to, like, blow my brains out. Question 12, Daniel asks, will Boba Fett or some other Mandalorians be in the new movies? I mean, I would say definitely, yeah. I mean, if they're in the Rebels cartoon, they're definitely going to be in the new movie in some way. In case you guys haven't been watching Rebels, the character Sabine Wren is a Mandalorian. In terms of the spinoff movies, I mean, if we do get a Boba Fett movie, he either still has to be alive or he has to be like on his last legs. Thank you so much, everyone, for submitting questions. Those are always a ton of fun to do. And congratulations to the new giveaway winner. Foz Bros, I totally love that name. Just reach out to me on my channel for details. You win a $20 Amazon gift card. So here we get into some of the bigger rumors about the film. So I'm just going to put this spoiler tag up while I talk about it. Remember, these are all just rumors, all unconfirmed. A little bit of it has to do with that Dark Jedi character. So if you all know, Ryan Johnson was chosen to write and direct Episode 8. And he'll be working on Episode 9 too. But I don't think that he's doing both writing and directing on that film. So supposedly... Luke Skywalker is going to be like Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis's character from Looper, at least in relation to the Rainmaker. Without spoiling that film completely, just think about the Rainmaker character and how he appears in the film, like how we meet him, and what Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt feel like they have to do for a certain part of the film. That's rumored to be what puts Luke in opposition to the other original cast members. Again, just a rumor, but if it's true, it'd be pretty amazing. That's why it's possible that that red lightsaber wielding character could be the Rainmaker type character of this new trilogy. But part of the arc of Episode 7 will be the rise of that character. And I just realized that I forgot to mention it during my questions, but that lightsaber is called a crossguard lightsaber. The reason it looks that way is because it's designed to be that way by the Sith. But if the Rainmaker type rumors are true, it's also possible that that character could be just learning about the dark side of the Force, and so they could be inexperienced and thus building, you know, a less wieldy lightsaber. The other reason for the cross guard being that it's supposedly supposed to keep you from having an Empire Strikes Back situation where another Jedi can slice your hand off. For my next bonus video, I think because you guys requested, I'll do my favorite Jedi stories from the expanded universe. So that's going to dig deep into Knights of the Old Republic all across the previous expanded universe that was just kind of been thrown out now. I'll be sure to specify that whenever I post it, but be sure to subscribe to get everything. And again, feel free to leave all your requests for any bonus videos that you want to see. 
Just a quick reminder, new mobile links up here if you're on your mobile phone or on your tablet, you can now click on those. It's the same as the links that I had over here, but right now click here to watch the trailer again, maybe like 10 more times and click here for the latest Game of Thrones viral teaser. It's like nine seconds of footage, but it's like the first Game of Thrones season five trailer we've gotten. So thank you so much for watching. So let's all high five. I'll see you guys tonight.